preached out of this before, but um, Deuteronomy chapter 4, starting at verse 1, I, I believe this message kind of goes along with our Sunday school lesson, certainly goes along with the, Danny's testimony there, but uh, Deuteronomy chapter 4, starting at verse 1, says, Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, and ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Belpeor, for all the men that follow Belpeor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you, this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. And that goes back to our testimony, our witness, and that's you know he told God, God was telling them, or Moses was telling them, you know this is uh, you know people's going to see you, they're going to watch you, and they're gonna, they're going to understand that you're different. So for what nation is there so great who? Hath God so so nigh to them as the Lord our God in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all the, this law which I set before you this day? Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, and they may learn to, to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. May God have blessing to the reading of his word. Let's Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege that we have to be in your house. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to preach this morning. Lord, I pray that you would help us this morning to be able to preach. Lord, you know the needs of this hour. Lord, I pray that it would you, you would take your word, Heavenly Father, that it would work in our hearts and it would uh, help us to be what we should be for you, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray that you guide my thoughts and help me to say those things that are necessary this morning, Heavenly Father. Keep me from saying those things that shouldn't be said here this morning, Heavenly Father. Just help me to preach. Uh, what you put on my heart, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name we pray, and amen. Uh, verse 9 there says, Only take heed to thyself, and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. I'll read a couple more verses out of Deuteronomy chapter 11. It says, Take heed to yourselves that, that you that your heart be not deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be killed against you, and ye and he shut up the heaven, and there be no rain, and that the, and that the land yield not her fruit, unless you perish quickly off the good land which the Lord giveth you. Uh, my thought this morning is really just to, the thought is to, to, to take heed to yourselves, is what the Scripture says in those two passages of Scripture, only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. Uh, verse 9 of Deuteronomy 4, verse 16 of Deuteronomy 11 says, Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived. Uh, you know, as Christians, you know, we have a responsibility to live for the Lord. We have a responsibility to make decisions to serve Him. You know, and it, it's our responsibility. It's our choice. Uh, it's our decisions. Take heed to thyself. You know, uh, you know, God gives us the Holy Spirit within us to, to chasten us when we get out of line, to, you know, direct and to lead us. But the ultimate choice is ours. We are a free moral agent. We have the ability to choose what we want to do. Uh, those that are here this morning chose to come to church. Uh, you chose for yourself to come to church. Some didn't come to church this morning. They chose to stay home. Some couldn't come to church because they're sick. I understand that. But a lot of folks, they just don't come to church because they choose not to. Uh, you know, they chose for themselves not to come to church. But 
Uh, I, my thought this morning really is just take heed to yourself of what you're doing. Uh, first point kind of goes along with Danny's testimony. Take heed to thyself, uh, the places that you go. Uh, as a Christian, remember that people are watching you. That's what God was trying to tell the, his, the nation of Israel. Hey, the nations are going to be watching you. The nations are around you are going to see that you're my children, that, that I'm your God. Uh, and, you know, when we go out into the world, people are watching us. Whether we understand that they are or not, they are. If we claim to be a Christian, people are watching to see what we do, where we go, how we act. Uh, and we need to understand that. And if I go going back in Genesis there, uh, when Abraham and Lot were together, and, and his men, the, the two people, the, you know, they, their men, their servants began to strive against each other, and they decided to separate uh, and Abraham told Lot, he said, you choose what you want to, you go that way and I'll go this way or vice versa. Uh, in Genesis chapter 12, or chapter 13, verses 12 and 13, it says, Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent towards Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Uh, you know, Lot, when he looked out across the plain there, he, he tried to choose uh, what he thought would prosper him the most. Uh, you know, he's seen that the plain was well watered. He could that'd be a good place for his livestock. There's good cities there. Uh, and then he, when he went there, he pitched his tent towards Sodom. Uh, but, you know, the wickedness in that city was great, but he pitched his tent toward it. And if you go on, you read a few more chapters over, I think it's about chapter 17, chapter 18, you see that Lot is in that city. Uh, he's dwelling among them. Uh, and in another place in... in uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 7 and 8, it says, And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them, and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. You know, I believe Lot was a Christian, but he was not in a place he was supposed to be. Uh, the Bible says he's a righteous man, and he vexed himself. Uh, in, in among those unrighteous people with their their wickedness, uh, you know, and we need to be careful uh, in our life. You know, it, it, there's a lot of Christians that go out and they get mixed up in things that they shouldn't be in. Uh, and and God, I believe, is speaking to them, say, "Hey, get out!" Like Danny was talking about when the Holy Spirit says, "Get out." We need to get out. You know, the problem is a lot of Christians are like, "Well, if I get out, people will think that you know uh, that'll be embarrassing for me just to walk out of here. It'll be embarrassing me for me to." Uh, do this or to do that and, and they won't they'll make fun of me or you know for being a Christian and they just go on they just keep treading forward when the Holy Spirit saying hey what are you doing you're in the wrong place you're not where you're supposed to be uh, you know you're my child uh, so you know we end up going wrong places and if you go wrong places guess what happens the ungodly thoughts start creeping in and ungodly actions start creeping in uh, it desensitizes us to sin uh, Lot was desensitized to sin. He was living there among them and uh, wasn't saying a whole lot about it until the angels came and said, hey, we're going to destroy this place. You need to get out of here. And then he got serious. Uh, you know, when the rubber met the road and he knew that, that destruction was coming, judgment was coming, he got serious. And he went and he talked to his sons-in-laws and his daughters and, and they looked at him as one that mocked. Why? Because he was living there among them. But, you know, he still believed God, and he wanted, he wanted them to get out with him because he knew destruction was coming, but he didn't have a testimony anymore. You know, uh, friends, I don't know about you, but I can look around, and I can see that judgment is coming. Amen. Judgment is coming. Are, are we living in such a way that when we go to our friends and our loved ones and say, hey, you need to be saved, you need to get out, uh, you, need to, you need to come to Jesus before it's too late, they're going to look at you and say, well, I, you know, I'm just as good as you are. Uh, you know, uh, I... I can't see any great difference in your life. Uh, and that's what his son-in-laws and daughters all daughters were, were talking to, to, to Lot about. You know, I can't see any difference in you. You're living here with us. You're here in the city with us. Well, you know, what's the big deal? Uh, you know, we're we're living in a time where Christians have become uh, desensitized. The McCamish used to sing a song, Getting Used to the Dark. You know, we've, we've kind of gotten used to the dark. We kind of got used to living along with, you know, that every day we're pounded every day that, hey, uh, homosexual is all right. Abortion's all right. This is all right. And, and, and sins, and the world just looks at it and says, well, it's, it's just, it's your choice. You can do what you want to do. Uh, you know, and God says it's sin. And God wants us to come out from among that unrighteousness. God, you know, he loves us and he wants us to come out. But 
Christians have just kind of gotten used to the dark and are kind of just going with the flow. Don't want to. I don't want to cause any uh, any disturbance. I don't want to stand up. And you know, people might uh, come up against me if I stand up. You know, they might persecute me in some fashion. But it's time for us as Christians to stand up. Take heed to yourself. Uh, go to the right places. Make the right decisions. Hey, when you go uh, to the right places, then there, there's no temptation for for ungodliness. Uh, you know, the seed's not sown. When you go to the wrong places, the seed's kind of sown in there. When you go to the right places, godly uh, actions and deeds are, are reinforced. Uh, you know, it keeps us, and when you go to the right places, when you're coming to church, it keeps us sensitive to sin. Uh, you know, when, when you start laying out of church for a while, thing, it becomes easier to stay out of church, and, and sin becomes uh, less uh, egregious to you, so to speak. Uh, but when you're, when you're closer to God, and you're reading the Bible, and you're praying, and you're coming to church, uh, when sin pops up in front of you, you, you know, uh, it, you're more sensitive to it. And you say, hey, you know, I, I, I need to get out of here. I'm in the wrong place. Uh, but if we if we keep putting ourselves in the in the wrong place and staying there, we kind of become callous to it. Uh, and when you become callous to it, you just kind of, uh, you're there. You say, well, I, I, here's the thing. I'm an adult. <laughs> you know, I can, I, you know, I can, uh, I can do this. I'm an adult. Uh, you know, uh, hey, as Christians, we need to say, I'm a child of God. Uh, you know, uh, and God doesn't want me here. So take heed to yourself. Take heed to yourself and the friends that you choose. And most times we talk about this to, to young people. But hey, adults need to take heed to themselves as to the friends that they choose. Amen. You know, uh, every single one of us have friends. You know, uh, and a friend is an important thing. Because a friend has a a friend has an effect on your life, especially if they're a good friend. Uh, you know, if they're a best friend. The Bible says in Proverbs twenty seven seventeen it says, "Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend." Your friends have an effect on you. Your friends uh, have an effect on the way that you think and the places that you go, uh, the things that you do. Uh, you know, because when you're hanging out with your friends, hey, somebody's gonna say, well, "Let's go here." Well, if you're hanging out with the right friends, they're not going to want to go to the places that you shouldn't go. They're going to want to go to places that are godly, that are all right to go to. But if you're hanging out with the wrong friends, the wrong friends say, oh, let's go down to the bar or let's go over here. And, and then all of a sudden there's uh, a choice you've got to make. You're going to stand up against your friends and say, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, or are you just going to go with the flow? Iron sharp with iron. Your friend has an effect on you. An ungodly person, uh, you know, uh, should, should not be your choice for a best friend. You know, I'm not saying don't befriend those who are lost. Hey, how are you going to be a witness to them if you can't friend them? Uh, you know, be a friend to them, but don't let them be your best friend. They're not the ones that you should be hanging out with all the time. They're not the ones that you should be running around with and doing everything with. I'm not saying you can't do some things with them, but they shouldn't be your best friend because, you know, when you're friends with somebody, that's how you can become a witness to them. You can talk to them. But now, uh, your best friend ought to be somebody that, that loves the Lord, that that does the same things that you do and wants to do the same things that you do because they're going to have an effect on you. When you start hanging out with the right kind of people, uh, there's a peer pressure in the other direction. Uh, you know, that are godly people, they're going, to, they're going to help you to draw closer to God. People that are reading their Bible is going to encourage you to read your Bible. People talk about their prayer life and praying and, and talking to God and bringing things to God in prayer is going to encourage you uh, to get to God, get in touch with God through prayer. People that are faithful to church and enjoying church and wanting to, uh, you know, be in church and to worship God and to testify and to sing, they're going to encourage you to be active in church. Hey, that's what a friend does in your life, and that's important. You know, take heed to yourself as the kind of friends that you choose. Uh, an ungodly friend is going to tempt you to partake of something that you shouldn't, but that godly friend is going to encourage you to be doing the things of God. So take heed to yourself. Take heed to yourself in the entertainment that you choose. Uh, the television, the movies, the music, the books, the magazines, uh, you know, because all those things, oh, they have language, they have violence, they have uh, improper relationships, you know, nudity, all these things. We'll, we'll sit there and we'll take things in and say, well, I'm an adult, uh, you know, but I'm a child of God. We need to remember that. I'm a child of God. Above all else, I'm a child of God, uh, you know, and take heed to yourself. What are you allowing to come in? Uh, you know, we've let Hollywood pump into our uh, mind the things, the ungodliness of this world for years and years and years and years through the television shows that come through our television, through the movies that are on, on the movie screen, 
uh, through the music that is listened to, uh, the ungodliness that is just continually bombarding us every day. We need to be careful about what we allow to come into our life because that has an effect on us too. It's just kind of like a, a dripping water. Just tap, 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 tap on that rock. And it's just constantly tapping on. Eventually you start seeing a divot in that rock. You start seeing a wear there. And the world just wears on us. Wears on us and wears on us. We need to be careful. Uh, take heed to yourself and the things that you allow to come into your life. Uh, because they're going to, uh, you know, if you're not careful, you're going to let it... Uh, let it rob you of time uh, with God and time with your family. Be careful what you participate in uh, with, uh, as far as inter entertainment's concerned. Uh, take heed to yourself in the thoughts that you imagine. Uh, you know, uh, Brother Alan Myers was preaching here years ago, and he got on our thought life. You know, and that that really that really touched me, and I think about that a lot. Our thought life. You know, uh, we, we keep uh, our actions in check many times, most of the time. But what do we think about? You know, <laughs> we, we might get in trouble there. The Bible says in Romans 8, 6, says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. How's your thought life? What if people knew what you were thinking? Would we want them to know what we're thinking? Probably not. You know, uh, do we want people to know what we're thinking? Guess what? God knows what you're thinking. He knows what we're thinking. He knows, uh, the Bible tells us that his word is uh, quicker, or sharp and powerful and quicker than any, any two, sharper than any two-edged sword, a piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and knows the thoughts and intents of the heart. You know, God knows our thoughts. He knows uh, the intents of our heart. Uh, Proverbs 23, 7 talks about how important our thought life is. It says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Uh, Proverbs, or Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, talks about you know, thinking on good things. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. You want to know what to think about? Go to this verse right here and think about those things that are true, the things that are honest, uh, yeah. things that are just, pure, uh, lovely, of good report, things of virtue, things with praise. Uh, think on these things, he says. God gives us that list to think on. The Lord knows our thoughts. He knows what's going on in our mind. Uh, Jesus, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 4, it says, And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? You know, we're not, well, people around us might not know our thoughts, but I'm telling you, Jesus knows our thoughts every second of the day. You know, and we need to, you know, we, we strive to keep our actions in check. We need to strive to keep our thoughts in check. You know, how do we do that? Put right things in our mind. Put gospel music in your mind. Uh, put the word of God in your mind. You know, think right things. It'll help us in our daily walk. It'll help us in the decisions that we make. You know, take heed to yourself and the things that you imagine, the things that you think. When we allow our mind in the world to gutter, it won't be long before we get, a, get in there physically too if we're not careful. Then take heed to thyself in the values that you embrace. Uh, you know, are your values in line with the world or are your values in line with God? Uh, Ephesians 2, uh, verse 2 says, Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And, I, you know, that walk is talking about there is the way that we're living. It said, In time past you walked according to the course of this world. Uh, you know, but there's a difference in us now. When we get saved, there's a change that takes place in our life. Our walk is different. Our talk is different. The places that we go, our values are different. Our, our values change because our values start lining up with what God says. Uh, Ephesians 2, 1 says, And you hath, hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. That word quickened means to be made alive. He made us alive in Christ Jesus. <coughs> 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, 
He's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. We're different. When God saves us, he changes us and makes us a new creature in Christ. And he gives us new want-tos, uh, new desires, new values. Uh, you know, uh, we ought to have godly values that, hey, uh, that line up with the, with the Bible and the things of God. Don't, don't line yourself up with the things of the world. Hey, we're, we're out of that now. God called us out of that. So take heed to yourself and your values. Take heed to your priorities. Take heed to thyself and your priorities. Matthew 6, 33, Jesus said, but Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Where are our priorities? You know, lots of times our priorities aren't in line with the things of God. Uh, we, we, our priorities get mixed up, and uh, we think, well, my job is more important than church, or my my house, uh, you know, going on vacation is more important. My hobby is important. Recreation is important. And you know, whatever it might be. There's a lot of things that people hold in high esteem in their life. And, you know, that's all they think about. But where does God fall into your priority list? He ought to be first. He ought to be very first in front of God. You know, he, at the top of your list, he ought to be right there, you know, Spending time with God, spending time with your family, uh, spending time at church, uh, you know, put God first. Bible study, prayer, church attendance, tithing, witnessing, serving the Lord in some fashion. What's your priority? You know, the world has priorities. You and I, our priority ought to be the things of God. And then take heed to yourself and the fellowship that you have with God. Uh, you know, What's your relationship like with God? Not, not just come to church. You know, come to church is one thing. You know, lots of times we come to church and we put on uh, our, our best clothes. We put on our best face and we put on our, boy, I'm, I'm glad to be here, smiley face. And uh, But our relationship with God is really in the tank. <laughs> you know, uh, what's our relationship like with God? You know, not what we put on a public persona, but between you and God, you know, what's your relationship like? Is it close? Are you close with him? Uh, you know, the number, if you're like me, the number one hindrance in my relationship to God is me. You know, the, the choices that I make, take heed to thyself. Uh, you know, we do well to take heed to ourselves and our relationship, what we're doing. Uh, so if there's areas in our life that we need to change, you know, as the Holy Spirit works in our life and he points things out to us, don't just sweep it under the rug. Don't just keep on going. Uh, it's time to take heed and say, hey, I want to change these things because I want to have a closer walk with God. Don't let yourself get in the way of a great relationship with God because God wants a great relationship with you. So take heed to thyself. Let's get a song of invitation. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, you need to be saved. I know I've kind of spoke to Christians this morning, but uh, I believe that, you know, if, if you're lost, you need to be saved. Take heed to the Holy Spirit dealing in your life saying, hey, it's time to make a change. It's time for you to serve Jesus. Because the Bible says God's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But if you're saved, take heed to yourself. You know, what's your relationship like with God? Where do you stand with him? Get in that right relationship. Get back in fellowship, you know. 1 John 1, 9. I love that verse in the Bible for Christians. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, that, that verse right there was written to Christians. You go back and you start reading 1 John, it starts out, my little children. He's talking to Christians. And he tells us if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If our relationship's not right with God, we can make it right by just simply repenting and asking God to, to restore our fellowship. And that's what David did. David said, restore to me the joy of thy salvation. If the joy is gone, get it right with God. He'll restore that joy. Let's get a song. What page do you have? 